Welcome to E4 Electric Livestream. Today I'm going to share some tips with you on how to buy a used Tesla, though some of these tips are just as good for Tesla as they are for any other electric car. Um, then I'm going to answer some questions and then those of you who are my Patreons, we're going to switch to my Patreon page and then uh, there are a couple of interesting stories to cover. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there. And if you already have, then just click on the bell notification icon. That way you won't miss anything moving forward. And since I just mentioned my Patreons, and by the way, the two stories that we're going to talk about on my Patreon community uh, is uh, this uh, BMW M Next concept, which essentially looks like a BMW i8 next generation. Will it be fully electric? And then I think a lot of you are already talking about it in the chat room right now. And this is the light year one, which used to be a school project, really. <laughs> it became a car company. So that's pretty cool. And I uh, want to quickly uh, give a sh shout out to one of my newer Patreons. Kyle Mahan, thank you so much for joining my Patreon community. All right, and the highest super chat, if there are any, will be invited to co-host part of the show next Tuesday. So, and by the way, I, and I'm going to be featuring random pictures that I took over the last few years with my Teslas that uh, have absolutely no meaning whatsoever. I think the reason you're seeing them for the first time is because, uh, really, I don't know why I took them. So... Just hopefully you'll be entertained. So let's start with uh, with some tips about uh, buying a used Tesla. And uh, there are tons of people now that see value in buying a used Tesla. I did make a video, I think about a week ago, with whether or not used Teslas really retain value. And there are a couple of major parameters there. One is that the price, especially the base price of Tesla, especially Model S, that's what we're talking about, keeps going up. Uh, not because Tesla is raising the price, I mean, that too, but also because the uh, tax credit here in the United States keeps getting cut in half. We have another, what, six days until it happens again. Um, but on the other hand, Tesla keeps producing all this uh, updates and upgrades to the car that even a three-year-old Tesla looks pretty outdated to somebody who is up to date on what's happening with the technology from that from the company. So pluses and minuses, but nevertheless. Now, let's start with number one, and this is the most important one, warranty. If you buy a used Tesla, and it's probably gonna be a, what, three, four-year-old Tesla, make sure that there is either still warranty on it from the manufacturer, um, an extended warranty that you can buy or the previous uh, owner bought, or it is um, certified pre-owned, even though that they call it inventory car, from Tesla where even on the older models that will still give you two year up to 100,000 mile warranty because without the warranty, uh, it gets really pricey. I should mention that the electric powertrain um, and the battery has eight year, 100,000 mile warranty anyway, um, though in some older Teslas, I think it's unlimited mile warranty, uh, but now it's kind of mandated by the law. So all electric cars have that same, at least same uh, warranty. But everything else is electronics and even something like a door handle. A lot of times, and my cars had three times when it, uh, my previous cars, two cars, had three door handle uh, issues. And if it wasn't for the warranty, I believe it was like $800 each time. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of us had our uh, main monitors replaced because we saw either those bubbles uh, or uh, like a yellow frame around it. So they would change that and quite a few other issues. Um, so if you're trying to save money, which is usually why people buy used cars, and you're trying to save some money, you might actually end up spending more than and if your car breaks down. And the older model that you get, the more chances there will be trouble. Unfortunately, I had trouble with all of my models from 2012 to 2015, um, some people are luckier than me and some people are actually less even lucky than me, believe it or not. So, um, it's, uh, it's something that you absolutely need to make sure that you get, uh, there is a, there is a good incentive for buying directly from Tesla. They have an inventory used inventory and now even model threes are in that inventory. Um, and they have two types of warranties, extended warranties. There is a third party 
warranty company that uh, gives extended warranty for electric cars, Accelerate Otter. Uh, they're one of the sponsors of my channel. So as a matter of fact, if you mention this channel, um, I believe you get a hundred dollars off. Um, might want to check on that. But um, and they also offer leases for electric cars. So just make sure somehow that you have a warranty or you understand that you're gambling. Um, in that case, you might want to ask the previous owner or if it's Tesla uh, to pull the entire service history for this car. So if you see it's a very long printout and a lot of the petty little things, then this car is probably not made very well and I would stay away. If it's just a few things, especially, you know, believe it or not, it's going to sound funny, but if these are major things, like the uh, uh, motor was changed, it's actually not that bad because once they change the motor, um, I, I, it's almost it's almost unheard of for Tesla to change it again. Now, it has happened, but usually a newer version of the motor, if it was already installed, it's not that hard. It's not like changing an engine in a car where everything else just goes to hell. It's a pretty simple procedure and they don't really repair those motors. They just throw it away and put a newer version. You're actually okay in that case. So if something like this, and obviously, you know, go get, you know, the, uh, what's that service? I forgot. I'm sure a thousand of you will correct me, but uh, you know, where you get to see whether or not this car uh, was an accident before, um, you can still get it from the, a lot of times from a Tesla printout because a lot of times um, the repairs have to be in their uh, certified body shops and they have to get involved, but um, uh, Carfax, there you go, Carfax. So warranty is extremely important. Now let's go to the next one in the second unrelated picture of me. There you go. I'm wondering, and you're wondering about supercharging, and that's what you should be wondering as, uh, as well. If you uh, travel a lot in your Tesla, and um, a lot of people travel from San Francisco to La uh, Los Angeles or from Los Angeles to Las Vegas here on the West Coast, if you travel a lot, the chargers for supercharging can really add up. Not as much as you would pay for gas, but they can add up. So if you're buying um, pre-owned Tesla, check if it has uh, free supercharging. But even then, it's a little tricky because I believe, what is it, 2016 when they started doing this where the car will have free supercharging, but only for the first owner, for the original owner. And if you're buying it from that owner, you will actually lose it right away. There will be no free supercharging you'll have to pay. So you might want to check even if the original owner has a free supercharging, whether it's for life of the car or just for the life of the first uh, original owner ownership. Um, so check on that. Supercharging is important. And, you know, really, you should understand in general how charging works with electric cars, especially if it's your first one. Well, I guess that would be the only reason. Um, make sure you have a place to charge at home. Uh, if you don't have, and I did a video with Eli Burton of my Tesla Adventure a couple of weeks ago, if you don't have a place to charge at home, you may just not be the right person to get an electric car. Um, charging it at superchargers, even if you have the super free supercharging, well, not only you're doing the wrong thing by blocking somebody else who maybe is traveling and really needs it, and now they have to wait for you um, to charge, you know, your car. You know, you'll end up just spending a lot of time charging for 45 minutes an hour, you know, once or twice a week. It, it's just I don't know if if you if if this is if this is what you're willing to put up with that's fine but a lot of people would just rather wait or install the chargers at home or apartment complex uh, here in California there are laws that um, I think if there's like six units or less you know check on that it all always changes but um, uh, the apartment complex if you request to put a charging station have to do it as long as you pay for it and of course that can actually add up because maybe running it to your carport or your garage spot um, may cost more than installing it itself and do you really want to do it if you have you might want to if you move in another six months or whatever but that's up to you i'm just saying if you don't have charging at home you might be in a bit of a pickle okay so let's move on to the third one and uh, here's another picture yeah, right. I don't even know why I took it. Where else would I use this one? But anyway, nevertheless, uh, let's talk about autopilot. So um, there are quite a few different versions of autopilot. Obviously, there's a first version that was created by uh, Mobileye, which later was acquired by Intel. 
uh, and then after that it's called 1.0 and after that the second version and on uh, of the autopilot was created by tesla and it has various hardware right so 2.0 2.x 2.5 they're all the differences is basically uh, the hardware and unfortunately between even those uh, uh, different hardware versions you may or may not be getting some of the uh, self-driving features so if self-driving and autopilot is something that's really important to you you might want to dive in and exactly what kind of hardware that tesla has and see if the feature that you really need is uh, possible uh, for that hardware and as a matter of fact a lot of uh, like sentry mode and and a, a lot of other things are tied into the cameras even though it has nothing to do with self-driving but that also uh, uh, is something that you either will or will not have uh, depending on the self-driving hardware that the Tesla has now if you like my like me and don't care for the self-driving features then you know get a car without it because that will be cheaper because a lot of people really want autopilot and if you don't care for it um, that's that that's that that car will uh uh you know go down in price much uh faster chris bates in the chat room says i'm driving on autopilot one right now and watching my live stream mm -mm 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 -mm. i hope you're just listening to my live stream but uh, you know autopilot one was better than the autopilot two until maybe a year ago i know once i and i don't know if some of you guys know this but once tesla decided they're going to do their own thing as they've been doing it for, with pretty much all of the uh, third-party contributions to Tesla they um, they said we're gonna do it ourselves and they could not do it themselves uh, until pretty much a year ago where uh, AP2 features just were not as good as AP1 features that were not really being developed anymore um, so I had AP1 in my last two cars and as far as driving on the freeway it was fine parking the car all that stuff um but if you really want the latest stuff where a car will get out of the parking spot and meet you in front of your restaurant or or um, a shopping center then you need to have that uh the latest navigate on autopilot obviously requires that and more and more features that are going to be coming out with definitely requires the latest um let's see uh nigel how are you nigel he says uh, he asks do you think there will be a, a many secondhand model 3 available in a year or demo versions low mileage at sensible price uh right hand drive are there many left hand drive available in us at a good price um i doubt it uh, i just looked at used model 3s in the tesla inventory there were like three in the bay area and sacramento areas so like northern california just three and i think they're down to zero now if you looked at the craigslist there were also maybe 10 and the cheapest one was forty thousand dollars and that one had a salvage title so i you know i think people who got it originally are going to hold on to it and if you're looking for a cheaper version of a cheaper version of a tesla which is model 3 you know don't forget the first couple of years they were selling nothing but expensive versions so used ones will still be up there and you will probably be able to buy a cheaper version for cheaper brand new cheaper version for cheaper than a, um, a performance version from a couple of years ago um now the ones that are leasing ooh, <clears throat> the ones that are leasing right now um you know they, they they're not going to be for sale as lease returns because tesla you know elon musk said that they're going to be keeping them for the robo taxi service so i actually expect there will be less model used model 3 is available on the market in three years than any other car um so i i you know but on the other hand there are so many of them now right they made so many of them sooner or later slowly people will start selling them and um there will be some opportunities right now if you want to get a good deal i would i would i would go with the model s for sure um all right so um we just talked about the autopilot all right now we have two more left before that of course i want to quickly mention that this video and this channel is sponsored by byton check out the all new all electric suv called mbyte coming to the us and europe at the end of next year join myself and fifty thousand other people probably more than that now and reserve your byton um it, it takes zero dollars to do so about a minute of your time there is a link in the description of this video so if you haven't already for some reason go ahead and do it right now in the description of this video. reserve your byton today already i i, I keep saying it every day 
and some people still haven't. All right. Are you going to get Byton? Uh, says I'm bored 200. Of course I'm going to get Byton. I'm a reservation holder. I can't wait. I, I really, I like that car from day one. When they unveiled, the car was in like a, in January uh, of 2018, right? Yeah. No. No, it was CS. Yeah, January. So it's a year and a half. I, I fell in love with it. Then people say, well, of course you love Byton and they sponsor your channel. Actually, it's the other way around. They're sponsoring my channel because I love Byton. And they only sponsored it from, uh, what, two months ago we started the sponsorship? But I was in love with it for more than a year. So, uh, yes, I will be getting a Byton. You said you were getting e-tron, said the Eco Kids. I never said I was getting e-tron. I said I was a reservation colder and was hoping to get an e-tron. But... It was up to Audi to kind of convince me 100% and they have not. I'm not saying I'm not getting it anymore. Um, I'm just saying for right now, I'm not. Um, I, I just want to see what happens and how they treat some of the original uh, issues that they're having. And I want to see what's out there. They just weren't able to close the deal with me. Um, and uh, I will not be getting Rivian simply because I'm not a pickup truck type of a guy. Um, so that's to answer a couple of other questions that I see here. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, and uh, just in case if you're joining me, we're talking about some tips that I'm sharing uh, when you're buying a used uh, Tesla or just an electric car in general. And um, this one goes for all of the electric cars. Battery charging rate. Uh, again, if you're going to be going on either long trips or if you don't have a charge at home but you have one at work, that really is going to matter of how fast is the charger, the actual charger is able to charge your car and how fast your car can charge. Now, the previous versions, most likely you're buying something that's two or three years old. Um, charging rates are about 70, 72, 75 uh, kilowatts, which is pretty good. Um, and they will charge in about 45 minutes, going from maybe 10% to 90% when you're traveling. But uh, make sure that uh, the chargers in your garage, at your work, at the um, and the superchargers uh, and, and other third party now that you can also use um, are compatible with this because um, if you will need to have your car charged pretty quickly, make sure it has it. Some um, cars, I don't know if they've done it lately, but I remember when I bought one in 2015, it came with a dual charger. So if you want to charge at home much faster, I think it was like 80 amp, you can make sure that the car has that. Um, so just make sure what the charging rate is for that car. And by the way, I forgot to switch the picture to another absolutely useless picture. And I don't know what's wrong with my eye at that point. Maybe something flew into it. All right, let's get to the fifth one and then I will take some questions. I think there are a couple of them piled up. Uh, the last useless picture, it's not even, it's completely off center. Um, my face looks super fat and there is a traffic Cohen or whatever it is in the background. So you see why I never used it, but nevertheless, enjoy. All right, so the last one is range, and this goes for everybody. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but but I think it's not really about the car. I think you need to look at the car and see what range it has. By the way, make sure what the realistic range it has. A lot of these cars have about 10% um, battery degradation, so whatever it is, look on the actual you know uh, rated range inside the car. And then maybe subtract another 20%, depending where you live. If you live in a colder climate, maybe even 30%. If you live in a warmer climate, then maybe 10 or 20% minus from the EPA rated range. Um, that's what your realistic range is. Now, if you're like me, and I had my 60 kilowatt hour battery Tesla for a while, the realistic range was like 170 miles. I never worried about it once. So to me, I mean, I have my Chevy Volt right now. It has a realistic 45 or maybe even 40 uh, miles and I only use gas, maybe a couple of gallons a month um, when I go to my hockey game, which is like way too far. But for my daily driving, never use gas at all and it only has 40 a month. So depending on what your needs are and then obviously look forward saying, okay, my job right now is maybe two miles away. But I change my jobs every year, and it's possible that my next job is going to be 10 miles away. So, you know, and then, of course, figure out how often you go on the road trips. And would you really want to want to use your car or maybe rent a car? Or maybe you have a second car, you know, picking up kids. And, you know, uh, 
it's up to you. I'm just saying, don't like look at what your car can do for you as far as the range is concerned, and then compare it to what your actual needs are. If you're still driving a gas car, this is going to be your first electric car, then maybe keep track of how many miles you drive every day, like literally for a week or so, and then it will give you an answer of how many miles you really going to need and even if you're buying a 60 kilowatt hour 75 kilowatt hour battery tesla um or maybe you're buying the first generation you know a leaf i wouldn't recommend it but i'm just saying if you are then it's uh it's something that uh it's something that you should consider so consider the range but most importantly consider if it works for you or not all right oh there's one more thing i, I did have a bonus tip and that's why i have this one where i'm holding money that one I actually did use for a few uh, for a few videos, if you remember. Um, obviously, try to get a good deal. Uh, it's really kind of tough to determine what a fair price is, and um, people selling the car on Craigslist, you know, as a as a as a private party, obviously will sell it cheaper than you would get from Tesla. But it's that extended warranty that you'll still get from Tesla, even when you're buying a used car there that may just be worth the difference i'm just saying shop around make sure that it makes sense for you there are some good deals that you can get i mean there are people who are trying to get another car and they're in a bind and they want to get rid of this one now one thing i should mention there's such a thing as lease takeover so someone leased a car and then realized that they either don't need it or it's too much for them or they're not able to drive as many miles as they thought they would and they are offering for someone else to take over the lease now you'll still have to apply with um whatever bank that person was using to lease the car usually it's either tesla financial or us bank um and you will still have to pay maybe i think like three or four hundred dollar lease transfer fee but uh on leasetrader.com and craigslist is where you can find some of this a lot of times people get stuck with a ridiculously high payment so it doesn't make sense for you but sometimes it would be a generally normal payment maybe even a thousand dollars but you don't have to put any money down uh which which is a bit of a win but also if they haven't driven enough miles so instead of uh, a thousand miles a month that would be normal deal or they, the deal that they got because they didn't drive enough now you can average about 14 or 1500 miles i once i bought a jaguar that had 2000 over 2000 miles per month that 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 i could drive because the, the original driver didn't drive that much and he forfeited the down payment of five thousand dollars so that was a great deal so you might want to look into that as well but all i'm saying is try to get a good deal because essentially that's why you're probably getting a used car when you're buying it from Tesla, you can find some really good deals. But if you're buying it from a private party, that's where you can obviously make a better deal because different situations are different. Um, just make sure that it has warranty. I keep going back to the very first one. All right. I'm going to switch to the most ridiculous one that I have here. And uh, boom. Okay. So let me... Yeah, by the way, the reason I'm, uh, I was, uh, sorry, I'm chewing on something here. It's my, it's my cough drop. And I have another one just in case I got a strep throat last week. I don't know if you noticed the change in my voice and I had to go to like um, urgent care to get antibiotics so I don't lose my voice, but I'm still feel like I'm kind of losing my voice. So, um, all right, let me catch up to some of the questions. Um, Sanjeev. Is asking, what do you think about uh, if Tesla rewarded good uh, drivers, uh, top refers with small upgrades like rear view and side uh, mirrors and in interior parts? Um, you know, they might. And I just did a video about it because uh, Elon tweeted about the fact that they might, um, after 10 referrals, um, they might upgrade the uh, the cars without full self-driving with a full self-driving package. And I think it's a win-win for both. Um, as I mentioned, one, it, do it doesn't cost anything for Tesla to do so. It's not a roadster they have to give out. It's not a power wall. It's not nothing. It's just, a, you know, ones and zeros. It's a software upgrade. And I would only do it for a current owner. So once this car changes hands and that person wants uh, full self-driving features, that person would actually have to pay. Everybody wins uh so so yes um i don't know about mirrors and stuff like that i'm not really sure uh what the big deal about the rear and view side mirrors uh, maybe you can explain but i do think that they should uh offer upgrades to people um to um 
uh, to reward them for uh, for referrals. All right, I see a super chat from Dag M. I've actually received one from uh, from him before. So essentially, right now he's going to be the highest super chat. So if nobody beats him at two dollars, <laughs> um, he will co-host with me if he can next time. Uh, two dollars for your antibiotics. Hi, Elon says Dag M. Thank you, I appreciate it. Actually, I have not even paid them uh, for my antibiotics yet. I showed up to a pharmacy. Funny story. Actually, maybe this. Um, picture was taken specifically for how I felt at the pharmacy like this because I showed up and they're like yeah we don't have enough for you I'm like you mean antibiotics they're like yeah we're just gonna give you 10 pills and you have to come back like today right after this I'm gonna go and pick up the rest of my anti antibiotics so I'm gonna pay for it so thank you that two dollars will go to towards my copay which I think is like I don't even know what it is maybe there's nothing and then I'm just gonna put it into towards my hot chocolate at Starbucks but anyway Thank you so much for the super chat. Just so you know, so just so you know, guys, super chats and Patreon uh, uh, donations are all goes to basically me eating <laughs> and roof over my head. Like this is not a hobby for me. This is a full time job, and everything that I do, about 60 to 70 hours a week, is all for uh, this show. I produce about 15 videos a day. So thank you to those of you like Dagam who are supporting me. I appreciate it. Um, I know his real name, but. I shouldn't say it because obviously he chose not to. So uh, I believe he's also a Patreon. So that's that's pretty awesome. All right, let me get back to answering some questions. Um, EcoKid says Germans have been bringing out concept electric cars since 2010. Wake me up when one comes to market. Well, you know, as I mentioned, uh, one of the videos that I'm going to be making when we're switching from this live broadcast to the Patreon live broadcast is going to be this car where they didn't even really bother to create a prototype. This is literally, I think they just paid somebody on Fiverr, like $10, and, and got a rendering of, um, of a Roadster. So, But I agree, especially with BMW, I'm getting a little bit fed up. But with Audi and Mercedes and Porsche... By the end of the year, you will be uh, definitely you will be, you will see people driving them, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, Wolverine seven 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 says, "Dang, is it just me or Alex had ten thousand uh, subscribers just five months ago? Ten k subscribers, right? Um, no, no. Um, I have in the last few months, I've gained actually a pretty good amount of subscribers, but it goes up and down, like." For the last few weeks, the views were up and everything. Like this week, no one's watching my channel for no reason. I don't know. It's just, just, it's just the way it is with YouTube. Uh, let's see. But I'm, I think I'm just about to hit forty thousand in the next couple of weeks. I'm kind of excited about that. But to be honest with you, subscribers is not how, uh, not the probably correct way to count um, the size of the channel um, because not even all subscribers watch uh, the videos. I think on average about only, like when you produce a video, only 30% of viewers of that video will be watched by the subscribers. And not all the subscribers are actually gonna watch your video. So that's that's that. Um, what really counts, especially when it comes like when advertisers approach you and they ask you about your channel, what they really care about is how many views. And my, my views are, you know, some like it's three quarter of a million views uh, a month, which is something that even a channel with a hundred thousand subscribers doesn't always get. So um, it's all about views, and my views are actually been up. So, so but I appreciate the um, I appreciate you noticing. Uh, on the other hand, <coughs> I think I need another. Well, I'm I'm gonna take a drink. On the other hand, is the username. Does Tesla make money selling used cars? Does it count towards deliveries? Okay, it does not count towards deliveries because what they report is um, new car deliveries. But they obviously do make money on used cars. As a matter of fact, if anybody ever sold their Tesla back to, um, to Tesla, they know how little they got for that car. So, and the used car market is actually pretty big, especially because Tesla, you know, pays, you know, for half an hour, I'm exaggerating, but for some time of their mechanic and they do this 60 or 70 point inspection and boom all of a sudden it's certified i know tesla doesn't call it certified but you know i'm talking about how normally it's done by dealerships all of a sudden certified they put the extended warranty which actually is the cost is usually really small compared to what they usually sell it for um and then boom all of a sudden it's it's a pretty good value and they bought it for very cheap so they can make five to ten thousand dollars on these cars easily um 
Nice stock photos, by the way. Yeah, they're stock photos that are never going to get used. And I haven't even Photoshopped them. I, I just was like, you know, I was trying to figure out which uh, uh, pictures will go better with, with some of the points I was making. And I and I stumbled upon this. I'm like, I'm just going to throw this in there just, just, just to throw everybody off um, and use them. It's my ex-girlfriend who took all of them, actually. So, um, yeah, uh, let's see. All right, I'm just kind of going through some of them. EcoKid says I charge for uh, from my solar. It's free apart from pur purchasing uh, solar cost. Yeah, so it's free once you get it, um, but um, after that, yeah. It, it, and, and this is another decision that a lot of people have to make, right? Get the solar panels and you know pay twenty five, thirty thousand dollars and then everything is free. Though I think a lot of people don't realize that when they put solar panels on their roofs, when it's time to change the roof, you still have some extra cost of yanking those panels off and then putting them back in. And I believe you still have to have a specialized installers do that. You can't just have roofers do that. That's why the solar roof uh, from Tesla and their other companies are working on, on, on theirs. Um, the value is so great. People don't realize that, that those costs are kind of included in it. Um, Eco uh, Kids once again says I have paid off my solar and power wall costs in three years, which is incredible savings in no fuel for car and house. That's awesome. Um, Chris Bates says he's almost made it to Vegas. All right. Where are you staying? What are you doing there? Can we ask or is it like a secret? Not everybody wants to know. Not, not everybody wants everybody to know what they're doing uh, in Vegas or not doing in Vegas. Um Talked about a Rivian truck. I'm not getting one, even though I think it's awesome. It's just not a pickup truck type of a guy. Uh, Nylars asks, should I buy a Model 3 dual motor performance now or wait for the Model S refresh? Here's the thing. You will never catch up for too long. You know, uh, I, I would say just realize that Tesla will always make a step forward after you buy their car within a half a year and it will be outdated. So go for the value that you need versus the money that you have to spend. So it's like that. I absolutely hate it. By the way, a lot of people really like it. I absolutely hate it. I think the model year is a good thing. I think a refresh every five or two, seven years is a good thing or not a refresh body style change. Um, one of the reasons I decided not to buy another Tesla, at least for now, definitely not the new one is because of that, right? They you know, if I would have bought it in January, there would have been already another refresh and people who just bought it uh, through this refresh of the Model S going to have another refresh. I mean, this is three different Model S cars that are going to be made within one year and all of them have different specs. So if you bought it in January, by the end of this year, your car is going to be really, really outdated and that sucks. Um, but just for me, I, I mean, other people feel differently, obviously, so that's fine. Uh, Let's see. EcoKids actually gives a pretty good advice to uh, Nylar. Says Model S is the better car, but the Model 3 is a better value. I agree with that, actually. Absolutely. Um, there are some exceptions, but overall, you're right. Uh, Mike Mellick asks, are there any years slash models of S to stay away from? I mean, the older it is, the more chances of it breaking down. But it's all about value versus, you know, w what you're paying and what you're getting. The only thing is, again, if you are buying a car without a warranty, if you're buying a Tesla without a warranty, prepare to gamble. You may you may never put much money into the car and it will be the greatest deal of your life. Or you may start paying so much money, you could have bought a brand new, you know, Model S, uh, P100D, and the payments would be equal. So, you know, do you gamble? It's really your decision. Uh, let's see. Dagam says Etron charge rate is great. It might have less miles, but it can hold a longer, higher rate than others. Yeah. So here's the thing. I, I, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of over uh, the battery sizes and charge rates and maximum charge rates. I think what really matters, as a matter of fact, I am confident what really matters for customers, for consumers, is how many miles of real driving you can add per each minute of charging. 
that's that's all it is. Now I believe the Model Three beats e-tron easily uh, with a, even the V2 superchargers when charging. Uh, in terms of that, how many miles you add per how many? And but the, but overall thing, I think we're like people are arguing over a silly thing. Does it really matter how fast your Model Three chargers in your garage overnight versus how fast your e-tron chargers? In your garage overnight when both cars are going to have full charge in the morning right this only matters when you are uh, fast charging on the road and to be honest with me with you whether it's 25 minutes with a model 3 or 45 minutes with a e-tron both are unacceptable because it's many times more than three minutes that gas cars do it in and until we get we as the community as the technology gets to three minutes of refueling uh, whether it's a battery swap or whether it's a solid state batteries, um, this is going to be the biggest problem for those who buy electric cars. As a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow, uh, Eli of my Tesla Adventure is going to be here as a guest all the way from Philippines. Uh, and uh, we're going to discuss just that because the article just came out and I believe in New York Times, they were saying how much charge time um, they had to spend on charging uh, while making like I think it was an eight hour trip and they said we spent five hours charging. Now, granted, they use the Chevy Bolt for that, which is not really built for long distance traveling, and they only max us out at 50 kilowatts. Uh, they did not mention Tesla at all. But um, so we're going to discuss that uh, with Eli because there's a good point, but also uh, there's a misleading point there as well. All right, let's move on from that. Um, Nigel asked, what was the battery degradation like on your uh, old Tesla? You know, a vampire drain appears much worse on Tesla. Uh, so I have never had a vampire drain just because I've never left it unplugged for too long. Um, you know, I, whenever I left it, it was never at the airport or some parking lot. No, I have. I have left it for a week on the parking lot when me and my ex-girlfriend took a tour, a, a cruise, cruise uh, to Mexico. But I think it wasn't like anything that I even noticed. Um, and we went to a supercharger, I think, right away anyway. So that might have not been even a thing. Yeah, that's right. I emptied the batteries almost to the uh, emptiest, parked it. And then once we got back, then we made it to the superchargers. So it was fine. Um, but my degradation was... I just don't remember what I started with. But I think no more than 10% for sure. Nothing that I even noticed, to be honest with you. Um... Eco Kid says, I think you should go for the Model 3, Alex. Go for a drive in it, please. You will be shocked. I have driven it. I, I, I just have some problems with it. There are some things that I just think are just too cheap in that car. I, I just don't like this minimalistic um, design. I like luxury. Um, I really like the, uh, the uh, display behind my wheel or at least heads-up display. So when I'm driving, I just have to vertically look at my speed. Um, I don't, another thing is door handles. Oh my God, they, those door handles are killing me. They're just so cheap. I understand this car needed to be made cheaply because they, they want to get to 35,000. And I understand that's that's what the doors, and I think it's, um, I think uh, uh, iPace has the same door handles where you push them, they come out and you kind of drag it out of, uh, seriously, that, that just kills me. I really would have rather had them have a regular ones. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I might get it at some point, depending on what my financial situation is um, and what my needs are, uh, but only if I can get a ridiculously good deal. And obviously, good deals are going away as the tax uh, incentive is going away. So, yeah. And they're le oh, see, the thing is, I almost leased one. If they had a couple, couple months ago, when I was ready to lease it, if they had a good lease deal, I might have gotten it. I might have gotten, you know, put three or four or five thousand down, you know, two hundred fifty or so a month. I would have been okay with that. But their lease prog program uh, and and rates are just beyond ridiculous. I think I need another cough drop. All right. Um, Nigel says wife uh, just bought a second hand Mini Countryman Cooper S Speed Demon Gas Guzzler. I have. Um, I save she spends. You know how many men said that. I save she spends, ever, uh, a lot. Um, if, I, if I had a penny for every time somebody said that, that I could have afforded a brand new P100D L for sure. Um, uh, Nylarch says I currently drive a BMW 550i. It's a complete gas guzzler. When I buy a new Tesla, either Model 3 or Model S, should I opt to trade in my vehicle? Never. 
trade in your vehicle. I mean, unless you're a super busy guy and you have too much money, they are never trade in your vehicle. You will always lose uh, thousands of dollars. I know it's a hassle to put it up on least uh, on on Auto Trader or Craigslist or whatever, and have people come over and look at it and all that. You know, you know, looky loose can never buy. I mean, but at the end of the day, you will you will you will save yourselves a few thousand dollars. But if you don't have time and you have plenty of money, then sure, why not? Um, Kevin Peters. Okay, it's, it was for somebody else. Trading your card will help with taxes, says that game. I'm not really sure if that's true. Let me know how would it help with taxes. Um, I'm going to have to skip a few um, because I still have to switch to Patreon to do my other two videos. Come on there, obviously, Photoshop, says Nigel. Uh, yeah, I wish. <laughs> if I if I had some time to Photoshop stuff, I would have I would have done a better job. That's that is that was my job for 20 years. You know, I was a, a graphics designer. What do you do in Vegas? Stays in Vegas, says Nigel. All right, unless you have Instagram stories, right? Uh, Vegas in six weeks. Can't wait, says Stephen Barrett. Um, I'm going to Los Angeles for a VidCon. Uh, on in the in the beginning or middle of July, I'm looking forward to that. That's a um, conference for like YouTubers and fans and stuff like that. I'm mainly there to hang out with some of the other YouTubers I know that are going to be there. So, um, but it's going to be fun. I only go to Las Vegas for CES, really. Uh, let's see. Does your S have hardware 3 FSD? I don't have a Model S anymore, um, but it only had one. Point oh, oh, you guys are talking to each other. Maybe do it at and whatever. Um, oh, Nick Niman is here. Wow. Hey, Nick. How are you doing? It. One of the people I'm looking forward to uh, seeing at uh, the VidCon in Anaheim. That should be good times. And probably as hot as it's going to be in Anaheim uh, in the middle of July, it will not be as hot as it is here in Sacramento. Holy crap. Um uh, Mark says, yes, it is. Alex, you had a reporter who didn't know what he was doing. You can't blame the Bolt. Um, Eric uh, uh, Way News. I, I, on your YouTube. Uh, okay. I, I don't think this is even like uh, sentences that in, in, in English. So I can't really understand. Mark, you're going to have to retype that because I don't understand. Um, okay. Just like everything else, the door handles on all other cars will feel stupid after. Uh, uh, Steve says in the San Francisco Bay area, there are plenty of charging stations, but they're always full, even in Saramonte shopping center with 40 chargers. Um, that's the problem with all of these model threes making it to the market, especially in the Bay area where there's tons and tons of Teslas everywhere you look, there are Teslas and a lot of people live in apartment complex. And despite the fact that people paying four or $5,000 per month for their apartments, they don't come with uh, charging stations at at all, uh, and and when they do, it's not like it's like it, it's not dedicated. They're first come first serve, which is a shame. I don't understand how Silicon Valley, having all these builders build the the apartment complexes with with the ridiculous uh, monthly rates, and never bothered uh, installing this charger. If anything, it benefits them because they can charge more for rent, and of course they attract Tesla drivers, which usually people who will pay rent on time. Just profiling, I know, but I'm just saying. Uh, I was I was lucky because my apartment complex actually installed a couple of Tesla chargers specifically for my for me, um, so that that worked out pretty well when I lived in the Bay Area. But you really do need to have a house to make sure that you really have one guaranteed. Um, you only pay taxes on the new car prices, less the trade-in price, says Jeff H. Interesting. You know what? I did not know that. Uh, maybe it's a state by state thing. I don't think so in California here. And but I, but I will check on that. Um, Nick Niman says uh, someone needs to make the Model Three with a convertible option. You know, someone might be Tesla, but <laughs> I think they're a little busy right now um, with other things that they need to make and remake. Uh, VidCon is going to be fun, says Nick. Absolutely. Let me know, guys, if, you know, I've been thinking about maybe having like a, 
uh, uh, a viewer hangout because I'll be in Anaheim. And every time I'm in LA, people I come back and people are like, what do you mean? You haven't, you haven't, you know, we should have hung out. Let me know if there's, you know, a, a few people who are interested in hanging out in Anaheim and uh, we'll probably be near the convention center in Anaheim. Let me know and maybe we can organize something. It would be nice to hang out with people who are um, followers of the channel. Uh, always get the biggest battery, says Chris Bates. Well, it depends because if you don't need the biggest battery, then you're hauling it with you uh, and really you paid for something you're not going to use. But he says I drive a lot. So yes, 400 miles yesterday and today. I never uh, charge more than 80%. It's important on older Teslas. The fast charging happens at the bottom of the battery. Yeah, I mean, if you drive a lot, then obviously bigger battery. Um, for no reason... That's the username he says or she says, if you think the handles on the Model 3 suck, never go near a Mazda RX-7. I never will. Uh, the RX-7 are known for snapping completely off in cold weather. Wow. Or just minor rough handling. Some Corvettes did the same thing. Okay. Wasn't going to go for Mazda, but yet another reason not to. And a lot of uh, Steve says a lot of apartments don't even have parking chargers. And yes, rents are high. This is why I'm here in Sacramento, right? I don't have my big Silicon Valley salary anymore, just living modestly for now on what I make from this channel. And so um, rates here uh, are like three to five times cheaper for rent and for housing. I was just at my friend's house another day um, and the house is half a million dollars. Like literally it was just purchased. And the same house in Silicon Valley, I don't see how it would go for less than two million. Just, you know, I don't think you can even pay half a million for that house to be built. You know, forget about the land, just the building. I, it's amazing. It's pretty cheap here, though. There are some major drawbacks. I'll tell you about them some someday. Uh, but I don't want to complain too much. Um, CAP battles. Battles? Explanation point says, what do you predict Tesla will do with used inventory Teslas that are out of battery warranty in 2021? I believe many 2013 owners will trade in uh, their Teslas in 2021 to Tesla specifically. Thoughts? Well, I don't know if Tesla wants to sell cars, and I don't think that many dealerships in general do um, that are over 100,000 miles. So anyway, so if you trade it in, what they probably will do, just like any other dealership would do, they will give it to the auction house and then just auction them off. So they will get whatever it is that they can, which will probably still be more than whatever they paid for the trade-in. That's why I'm saying never never trade your car in unless you're super rich or have absolutely zero time. Um, so I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, they will continue getting the newer models the last three, four years. Uh, and um, But after that, they will just start just auctioning them off through a third party. Um, uh, Steve says, how about a hangout between Sacramento and San Francisco Bay Area? I wouldn't mind doing that. Maybe like Vacaville. Vacaville has uh, superchargers. Maybe we can uh, do, a, do a hangout there. Um, yeah, maybe we could. I mean, if, if there's enough people who want to hang out, maybe, you know, me and Eli will do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention it to him today. Maybe we can just do a hangout in Vacaville. That way it's between the Bay Area. I think it's only maybe about an hour. Um, so I know some people in Stockton uh, who would want to show up and there's some people in Sacramento. So I think everybody will win. Um, yeah, okay. Maybe we can do that. I'll bring it up to Eli. Uh, would you lease Model 3 given to buyback option? Asks on the other hand. I've answered that question a, a few times before. Um, no, for many reasons. First of all, uh, yes, there's no buyback option. So you're kind of forfeiting one of the best options for the lease because if, you, if your car is worth more on the open market then the residual value then you would buy it out and sell it and and make up that that money but if you cannot buy that car then then you kind of screwed i mean not screwed but you lost that money um so that's one of the reasons but secondly their their lease prices on the model 3 right now are ridiculous if i i believe i compared it once again a couple of times um between a model 3 and a Kia Niro EV because it's an all electric car of the same price with the same down payment. And the difference is really like $300 a month versus $400 a month. Just something ridiculous. So I would not recommend just for that reason. 
Otherwise, if they had reasonable rates and they were, you know, you, you would be able to uh, purchase this out of the lease, then yes, I would. I would recommend that. But those are kind of important, right? Nigel says here in the United Kingdom, most dealers give uh, to auction cars with high miles, even cars over five years old or on the lease. I think that's pretty standard practice, you know. Uh, Tom M. Oh, he's talking to Kevin, says it runs about, okay. All right, guys, so just uh, to summarize, uh, Dag M with $2, <coughs> $2 super chat towards my antibiotics, which, which I feel like I'm gonna need because my, my throat is starting to kill me. Uh, if nobody beats him in the next few minutes, go ahead and reach out to me again. I believe we've done this before. Uh, we'll we'll do a practice run and um, you'll co-host next time, which I'm actually looking forward to. Um, if you're a Patreon or if you would like to contribute to my channel, by the way, it's only like starting with one dollar a month to contribute to this channel. Um, a lot of people, you know, complain how I have to have all these sponsors and buy it and so forth. Well, if enough people contribute through Patreon, then I wouldn't need to have sponsors. You would be the sponsor anyway. So um, we're gonna go and move to Patreon.com/e4electric. Uh, we're gonna talk about the two stories of the day. One is the BMW i8, the new version, whether or not it's gonna be fully electric or plug-in hybrid. Is it enough miles and all of that stuff? And of course, uh, the car that everyone's talking about, um, the uh, Lightyear One, um, that was unveiled uh, this earlier this week. I think yesterday. So. Um, yeah, and of course, a uh, quick shout out once again to Kyle for joining my Patreon community. Oh, and don't forget, guys, if you haven't already, this one is free too, e4electric.com slash VIP. Uh, it's our uh, a weekly newsletter that where we basically, you know, there's so many stories a lot of times um, that I can't make any more videos, obviously. So bonus story goes into our newsletters. I have a great writer, AJ. Uh, and um, so he writes out a story about something that I wasn't able to cover during the week. Um, and then there's sometimes we do a deal of the month and a lot of other ways how we uh, how you can get a benefit of it. And just so it's free. So while you're in the description of this video, you can reserve your Python and sign up with our VIP letter uh, newsletter uh, in under like two minutes. So I think it's like a good value there. All right, Dagam, you are the winner. So uh, reach out to me. You will co-host the show next time. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, haven't picked a topic for uh, next week's uh, uh, live stream, but it will be once again on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Other than that, thank you for hanging out with me, guys. I will see you next time. And for those of you who are my Patreons, I'll see you in about a couple of minutes on patreon.com slash e4electric. Of course, remember to stay charged. <laughs>